Hello and welcome to the season premiere of On the Couch. I'm Nate Aquino. And I'm Emily DiPadova. Joining us today is a new faculty member at Rowan that is already making an impact on campus. Please welcome Dr. John Giannini, the director of the Center of Sports Information and Social Impact. Hi John, thank you Hello. for being here. Welcome. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. So how does it feel back how does it feel to be back at Rowan? Uh, T, uh, school that you helped lead to a National Division III championship. You know, Dr. Hushman said something very kind to me when I accepted my new position here. He said, welcome home, and it really feels that way to me. Uh, Rowan gave me my first chance to be a head coach. I have the best memories and lifelong friendships and relationships from Rowan, even when I was coaching at Maine or LaSalle. If we ever drove by this area, I would often say to my family in the car, boy, Rowan's great. It would be cool to go back there again someday. And here I am. Of course, the university's changed dramatically since 1996 when I left here, and I was proud of it then. I'm proud of all the growth, and I'm starting this new program that hopefully will even take the university a little bit further. So uh, there's nothing I don't feel great about being back here. Yes, of course. Welcome. Welcome home, actually. Yeah. So your transition from LaSalle University, which is one of the big five schools in yeah. Philadelphia, how was that transition from city life back to Rowan? Oh, my gosh. The, the drive, I don't miss. Oh, but when, <laughs> no, of but course. when you're coaching, you're so focused. You don't care what the weather is. You don't care what the traffic is. You don't care what time you leave for work because you're literally on a mission. So I kind of didn't even <laughs> notice things that normal people would notice. Now when I drive into the city, you know, there's traffic, there's uh, um, uh, construction, there's accidents, and I'm like, man, I'm glad I don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> but uh, the adjustment is that I coached for 34 years, I'm not doing that anymore, and I love what I'm doing, but any time you make that dramatic of a change so quickly, it's a little bit of an adjustment, but it's been a, a good adjustment. Oh, that's glad to hear that. So how do you feel that you know, going from coaching all those years to now teaching and being a director, how does that, you know, feel and how is that different, that change? The, the thing I like about it is my favorite thing in coaching was helping people. And now I get to help people and it doesn't matter how tall they are or how fast they are <laughs> or whether they can make three-point shots consistently. When you're coaching, all that matters. Really, the higher you go up in coaching, you pretty much have to win. And uh, you really need to try to recruit the best players possible and then of course you you try to help them um, now the thing I enjoy most about my job is the same thing I just get to help students but unlike in coaching I I don't have to have them perform for me it's just helping them um, with their lives their education their careers and uh, I don't need them like I said to win any games and I think it's more pure it's more pure education and uh, I'm really enjoying it that's really great. I love that. Dr. John, I have to ask, was basketball always your passion to coach, or were there other sports that you wanted yeah, to coach as well? Growing up, there were other sports, um, and then I started to get better at basketball, but I didn't think I was going to be a coach. I thought I was going to be a sports psychologist. That's okay. why I went on and got that PhD. It's in sports psychology, but I was really fortunate. I like to think of it in my terms of like God's timing where I, I had these graduate assistantships in coaching where I coached my way through graduate school and the highs are so high in coaching and coaches get literally addicted to the adrenaline, the adrenaline of the challenges and the, the, the adrenaline that comes with accomplishment and you're willing to endure the lows and the lows are really, really low. And at that young age, you kind of want those challenges and you kind of crave that adrenaline. So that's why I went into coaching at the time uh, as opposed to a faculty position. But 34 years later, um, or 29 years actually as a head coach, it, again, it, it, I think it's time to do something different. And this is the perfect opportunity for me at the perfect time. Agreed, I, I really yes. do agree with that. Um, now, you just said that you didn't expect to be coaching, but you ended up coaching for 34 yeah, years, yeah. which is crazy. Yeah. And in 2011-2012, you led the LaSalle Explorers to 21 wins, which was their school's um, highest since 1992. How did yeah. that feel for you? Yeah, th those two years were phenomenal. We went to the NIT in 2012, then the NCAA tournament and to the Sweet 16 oh, and wow. finished ranked 24th in the country in 2013. 
And like I said, the highs are so high. And, uh, you know, the, the highs at that point are, uh, for example, in the Sweet 16, we had a real tough draw. We had Kansas State and Kansas City. Oh, my in, gosh. In front of 20,000, mostly Kansas State fans. The game that came down to the end, and literally the floor was shaking. It was just incredible. And to see your team respond and to, to play at that level and to make it that far in the NCAA tournament, I had one of my assistants, you're very focused, you, you're really not a fan and you're not excited the way the fans are excited. But late that night after the press conference, we walked into the arena and we just look at this mammoth place and we say, you know what, this is really cool. But at the same time, I could give you uh, sad stories about just how low the lows are when you mm -hmm. don't win. Uh, at that level, um, you're expected to win and there's pressure on you to do it. You work year-round, you're with your players 49 weeks a year, you train year-round, you never leave uh, except for those three weeks in August and uh, it, it's hard to come up short. And in coaching, people are trying to stop you. They're trying to beat you. Right now when I go to work, no one's trying to stop me from helping my students. So I like that no one's trying to stop me yeah, like no they do in coaching. Every day's a win. Unless I fall down the stairs, I can't have a bad day. Now, this is a basketball-related question and totally not college-related. What is your favorite NBA basketball team? You know, it's crazy because I, I really have not followed the NBA as much as you would think oh. because, like, basketball is your job. And mm -hmm. I watch people I recruited. I watched my own team, I watched the people, our opponents who we have to play, and there's not that much takeaway that, in my opinion, that's translatable from the NBA to college. It's okay. just very different. But my favorite team would be the Sixers, yes. not, hold it, not because they're local, but I love their coaches. Billy Lang is a Rowan alum. He played for us over here. I did not know that. Yeah, so uh, of course I, I, I'm closer with Billy than anyone in the NBA. And oh Coach my Brown's been very gracious towards me, um, inviting me over and just in all our interactions, he's been wonderful. So between loving Billy, Coach Lang, and between Coach Brown being such a, a nice man, and I'm actually close friends with Coach Brown's dad. He's a legendary high school coach in the state of Maine who I got to be friends with. So That's because right. of the relationships with the coaching staff, the Sixers. That's That's so awesome. I, love the I feel like That's I'm amazing. in the presence of a celebrity I know, now. Right? <laughs> no, I, I, a long time ago. If this was uh, maybe 12 months ago, not as much now. No, you're still a celebrity without a doubt, yeah, honestly. <laughs> When we come back, we'll have more from Dr. John Giannini and the new Sports Cam Initiative on campus. Stay tuned. I believe that it's important to do what you love. If you are passionate about sports, then now is the time to study it. Rowan University offers the only Bachelor of Arts in Sports, Communication, and Media in the state of New Jersey. Students can specialize in Communication Studies, Sports Journalism, Sports PR and Advertising, and Sports Production. Sports is the ultimate reality TV. It's completely unpredictable. It's completely passionate. It's a battle of wills. You just see human emotion being played out in front of you. Uh, and that makes it an incredible subject of study. Whether it's production, whether it's writing, whether it's studying rhetoric, the sport industry has really grown phenomenally over the past 10 years, so the jobs for students could really be anywhere and, and everywhere. Welcome back to On the Couch. So, Dr. John Giannini, could you elaborate a bit more on what the sports camp program is um, here at Rowan and how it helps students? Well, there's a lot of people who want to study communications but also want careers in sports. So there are subtleties and, um, and different things in sports communication that we can now study, whether it's in production, radio, TV, film production, or uh, journalism, or advertising and PR. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to create a program for people who want to work in the sports industry. The faculty's great. Um, everyone has real world experience in addition to academic training. Uh, Elmo Steiner uh, for the Washington Post, Phil Anastasia for the Philadelphia Inquirer, Kate Harmon for the Philadelphia Inquirer, uh, Ed Bankin works with KYW and Derek Jones works with Princeton Basketball and uh, WGLS here. So all of them not only have the academic background but they're in the sports world 
and in the classroom they help prepare students for those careers. I'm in charge of a center and that center is trying to help people outside of the classroom. Experience is everything in this field, so I try to help people get experience here at RTN, at the WIT, um, our campus newspaper with WGLS in Rowan Athletics, get them experience here on campus, and then hopefully get to the point where you could take on challenges off campus so that when you leave uh, with your bachelors, you have two, three, or hopefully four years of real life experience in addition to this great uh, classroom education. And we also try to bring experienced people from the field to campus for guest speakers. Last night we had Bob Cooney in, uh, who wrote for the Philadelphia Daily News, and right now he hosts a, a sports talk radio show on WFAN. Uh, and every week we bring someone in just to network and, and meet with our students. So we want them to be connected. We want them to learn from professionals in the field. We want them to get work experience on campus. We want them to get internships off campus so that they can have success going after jobs in what's really a highly competitive market because a lot of people want these jobs in sports. Yeah, that's so awesome that's that you guys that, have yeah. so many experienced professionals teaching oh, these yeah, students. Yeah, yeah, they're tremendous. And it's amazing that there's, you have connections with those in the field already. Um, question for you. So what are your plans as a new director for the future of the sports cam uh, department? Yeah, uh, we have a series I talked about networking called Pizza with the Pros. Now what we do is we bring in a local professional and I want them across a wide variety of occupations. People who work in college athletics, people who work in professional athletics, people in radio, people in film, people in television, um, uh, and people in the big four professional sports, hockey, basketball, uh, football and baseball, but then also people in some of the other professional sports, uh, Philadelphia Soul, the Philadelphia oh, wow. Union. Um, so because I've spent 34 years in the sports world, you meet a lot of people during those years. Uh, so we wanna eat pizza and have fun of course. and have our students <laughs> meet professionals and learn from them. Then we have a higher end guest speaker series. If you notice the title of the center is uh, Center for Sports Communication and Social Impact. We not only want people to get good jobs, we want them to be people who have an impact, who make a difference. So a lot of our national level speakers will be in that area. Uh, George Ravelings visiting our campus on October 30th, everyone should go. He stood, he was Dr. Martin Luther King's security guard when he was like 23, 24 years old for the wow. I Have a Dream speech. And uh, George is very well read. And when he was in college, when he was your age, he started to get into reading. Um, and he has, he's a student of African American history and one of his passions for reading, he said that in times of slaveries, slavery, slaves would hide, the slave owners would hide their money in books because slaves couldn't read. And he said that shocked him. And when he heard that, it just motivated him to read. He felt, I'm so privileged to read. So he's this voracious reader, of course, when they're walking off the, uh, the steps of uh, the Lincoln uh, Memorial, he asked Dr. King as a 23-year-old, can I have the speech? To this day, he has the original I Have a Dream speech in his possession. No way. And he's strived to have an impact first on himself and his guidelines for how he monitors his own productivity and whether he's becoming better and what his habits for improvement are, are amazing. But then, of course, he takes those strengths to help others. Along the way, the way I know him is he's a Hall of Fame basketball coach, the first African-American basketball coach in history at Washington State, University of Iowa and USC. He was part of the Olympic basketball staff um, in 1984 and helped coach Michael Jordan to a gold medal. Oh my God. Um, then he went on uh, after retirement to be Nike's director of international basketball. And basically all the shoes and ads and everything you see about Nike throughout the world, that's Coach Raveling traveling the world and bringing basketball to all these other countries through his affiliation with Nike. So he's gonna be here October 30th to talk about society, history, how he tries to better himself, how we could better each other. He'll talk about the sports world, sports media. Uh, so that's October 30. So my vision is get kids work experience, expose them to local professionals that they can learn from, 
and then bring in some of these national leaders like George Raveling, October 30th, Toe Hill Theater, 7.30 uh, p.m. <laughs> so people can see that you not only can get a good job, but, but you can really make a difference. Of course, that's, that's incredible. That's something to look forward to, without yeah, a doubt. I think that's something that's go. really gonna bring students to this program yeah. is something like that. Yeah. Um, now I know that um, the center is about, I read the communication of sports and media and relating that to the sports world to broader um, things in the world. Could you expand on that and then give an example of something popular that's happened in today's society that could sort of relate to that? Yeah, well, it, number one, it's you see it in the NFL, starting with Colin Kaepernick take a knee, a knee and again in his words not to protest the country or to protest the military but to say there are things not right that we should talk about and then to a lot of the Philadelphia Eagles over here just uh, not only not as much doing things in forms of protest although they're willing to discuss those issues more than willing but really going out in the community and making a difference um, so we want, we believe that social impact comes in a lot of forms. Ability to discuss tough issues, um, service, making a difference for those not as fortunate. And in the sports communications area, there's not as many uh, people who are women or minorities. And as part of this program, we want uh, people who are role models for students who might be women or minorities. And we want more um, equity in representation. And equity in representation, we want society to be as fair as possible in every way, shape, or form. And because people love sports so much, if you're covering sports, you can give these kind of issues attention. Because if it has to do with sports, as well as social justice, people are going to read about it or they'll listen to it. Awesome, amazing. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Yeah. John. Yes, it was a true pleasure, and uh, I can't wait to see what you do for this program and the impacts that you make here at Rowan. Well, the bottom line is just seeing our students uh, have a great experience, great education, and then having success towards their goals. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. John. Thanks. Thank you. Coming up, we have Danny Minshaw and Victoria Todorova with this week's Word on the Street. Don't go away. How are you doing? We're back. And we have new th new news. Back and better than ever. Yeah. So we're going to go say hi to some people with this cool thing. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hi. What's up? I can't how are you? I'm good. How are you? Can you say hi? Hi. To sorry. the camera? He said hi. Just uh, lock my bike. We didn't ask for a life story. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Hello. Hello? Hi. What's up? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm really late for class. Okay. <laughs> Go for it. <gasps> Hello, puppy. This is the worst bunch of interviewers I've ever seen in my life. Which Cut one? camera. I'm disappointed. I like our brand new prop microphone. It works very well. Yes. And it also, I've discovered doubles as a nice karaoke converter box. Watch this. Okay, stop. Welcome back to On the Couch. Wow, it's feeling really hot in here. Is it you? No. Is it you? No! no it, it must, must be, be the, the Hot, hot Topics! topics. <laughs> this week we're going to be 
be talking about what's hot. And what's not. And speaking of what's not hot, Gritty. So the Flyers um, unveiled their new mascot, Gritty, recently. Uh-huh. And... Um, People are a little torn with it. People are a little skeptical about Gritty. You have some people that do like it, some people that don't. And a majority don't like Gritty. It's I just <laughs> feel like Gritty himself is a very scary character. It's a scary character. Like, um, he has a scary name, like Gritty. It's <laughs> Why not, Gritty? It's not, like, pleasing. I don't know. It just doesn't... Uh, and people were saying that, like, this is what Philadelphia looks like six months after the Super Bowl. <laughs> I mean, they're not wrong. They're not wrong. Not wrong, but I feel like the mascot should be a little prettier than uh, prettier than what Gritty's looking gritty, like right yeah. now. And but some people really love him. Uh, one guy even got a tattoo of Gritty on his arm literally hours after they um, announced the new mascot. That, that's which what is I call dedication. Dedication. That is Philly fans for you, I mean, 100%. To me, Gritty looks like a rejected Muppet. <laughs> Or like a budget cut Muppet. I can definitely see that. He needs some. Uh, he might need an appearance. Serious a new appearance. help with the, that hairdo he's got going on. He should really consult like the Philly fanatic because yes. he's not scary looking. He looks something I would want to hug. Yes. Gritty looks like something I'd want to steer that clear That I just of. chewed up. Yes. And uh, speaking <laughs> of needing a new appearance, um, Meghan Markle recently straightened her hair. Okay. And people. Swear that she's pregnant now, so because she because she straightened, straightened her, hair. her hair. So because someone straightened her hair, their first assumption is they're pregnant. Yeah. So I guess she hasn't straightened her hair since before she married Prince Harry, and Kate Middleton has actually changed up her hairstyle slightly, um, right before she announced each of her pregnancies. So because she straightened her hair, people are now assuming that. She's pregnant, which I just think is a little absurd and just really it just, far There's no correlation as to being, you know, having straight hair and being pregnant. Like, they're people, two different things. People come up with some crazy, like, speculations when it comes to famous people and people who are in the public eye. Like, I just, I don't understand it. Like, if, it makes no sense to me. If I was straight in my hair, are people going to assume that I'm pregnant? I don't think so because... I don't think that you're going to have that problem. No. But... Megan clearly does. That's just and I not just, fair. I don't think it makes any sense to me. There's literally no correlation between being pregnant and having straight hair. Like There's none. But if she is pregnant, kudos to those people who figured that correlation yeah, out because I job, definitely I could not. That's not just a shot. pretty wild. And speaking of stuff that's pretty wild, Post Malone. <laughs> he was recently on Jimmy Fallon and he recently talked about how Justin Bieber influenced him to get his first tattoo. First tattoo. Because now, he wanted to prove to Justin Bieber that he's tougher than him by getting a tattoo. I feel like you don't have to do much to be tougher than uh, Justin Bieber. Unpopular opinion there. I mean, Justin Bieber's grown up through the years, okay? I've been listening to My Rule 2.0. Please don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know, he was—he seemed like a really cool guy, and you know, most guys wanted to be, you know, whatever girls were into. Now, Post Malone felt intimidated by Justin Bieber because he has more tattoos, and Post Malone got his first tattoo because he was influenced by Justin Bieber himself. Believe it or not. I just—I don't know. I see Justin Bieber as, like you said, that little pop star sensation that all the girls love. So I don't see him as someone being like. I mean, I love his music. I really do. Oh, but I do too. And I'm a guy. And I just I associate him with that image and I don't see how meeting him makes you intimidated and like it just doesn't He make just sense wanted to, to prove me. that he was tougher than him. I mean, hey, he and I mean now Post Malone's on a roll with his tattoos, so I guess yeah, he started something good big. Good for him. <laughs> good for him. Well, that's all we have for today. I'm Nate Aquino. And I'm Emily Deepadova. See you next week on the couch. <laughs>